Hello, I'm Dr. Derek Keats, a former professor of biology, and I'm going to introduce you to the human endocrine system. We will cover the basics of the endocrine system, where the components of it are located in the body, and we'll introduce the concept of hormones. The human body. We all have one, even me, for the time being anyway. But how well do we know our bodies and how they work? Perhaps not as well as we might, huh? The human endocrine system is an exciting part of the life sciences curriculum because it's all about us, our bodies, and how they work. I don't know about you, but I like knowing my body and how it functions, at least a little bit, anyway. You remember when we had the 2010 World Cup soccer here in South Africa? Imagine a soccer team. When it's playing the game, it pretty much knows what to do, and it follows a set of rules and strategies. But there's not just the players in the team, are there? There's also a coach. And there are times when the coach needs to send a message to the team in order to change strategy or to do something differently during the game. There are signals that the team have agreed to for doing this. We can think of our body as a team. Mostly it knows what to do, but sometimes the endocrine system coach needs to get a signal out there to change something. So the endocrine system is like a coach signaling the players within our body to change something. Only there's not just one coach, there's several, and they're not all in the same place. So let us start with the location of the components of the endocrine system in the body. There are components located in and around the central nervous system, components located within the elementary system, and components located within our reproductive system. The central nervous system components of the endocrine system consist of the hypothalamus, a portion of the brain that links the nervous system to the endocrine system via the pituitary gland, the pituitary gland itself, which is a small pea-sized protrusion off the bottom of the hypothalamus at the base of the brain. The pineal gland, which is a small body about the size of a grain of rice. And the thyroid, a large gland found in the neck below the thyroid cartilage, or the Adam's apple as we refer to it. The elementary system components consist of a number of well-known organs and glands. It includes the liver, whose function includes detoxification, protein synthesis, and production of some of the chemicals necessary for digestion. The stomach also plays a role in the endocrine function. After the stomach, there's a small curved region that is actually the first section of the small intestine, and it's called the duodenum, which, not surprisingly, plays a role in the secretion of hormones involved in digestion. The pancreas is involved in in, relating, in regulating metabolism, and aside from its endocrine function, it's also a digestive organ, secreting pancreatic juice containing digestive enzymes that assist the absorption of nutrients and digestion within the small intestine. The kidneys are organs, substantial organs, and they serve several vitally important regulatory roles. They're perhaps best known for their role in the urinary system as well as for the homeostatic functions, such as regulation of electrolytes, maintenance of acid-base balance, and regulation of blood pressure via maintaining the salt and water balance correctly. They serve the body as a natural filter for the blood and remove wastes which are diverted into the urinary bladder. Some of their role, though, is endocrine in nature. The adrenal glands are well known for producing adrenaline, which controls our fight-or-flight response, but they also have a variety of other endocrine regulatory functions as well. The reproductive system components are also important within the endocrine system. You may recall that gonads are the organs that make gametes. In males, they are the testes, and in females, they are the ovaries. The ovaries play a prominent role in the endocrine system as do the uterus during pregnancy, as well as the placenta, also when the woman is pregnant. 
In males, the testes also serve an endocrine function. Now let's go back to our soccer team. The players, our body, the endocrine system coach communicates with the body, making use of chemical substances called hormones. The endocrine system is thus the system of glands, each of which secretes a type of hormone directly into the bloodstream to regulate the body. A hormone, then, is a chemical released by a cell or a gland in one part of the body that sends out messages that affect cells in other parts of the body. We can think of a hormone as a chemical messenger that transports a message or signal that has a purpose from one cell in the body to another. And that's the basis of the endocrine system. We have introduced the human endocrine system. We've explored the location of the components of the endocrine system within the body and we've introduced the concept of hormones. In the next section, we will look in more detail at hormones and some examples of how the endocrine system functions. I'm Derek Keats, and this resource is licensed under a Creative Commons Attribution License.